Yes, indeed, folks. The sounds of Gamma Ray with New World Order. Cataclysm Q&A time, as requested. I'm going to start off with the stuff that's been left on the Facebook. Sounds like a good idea, because there is a crap ton of stuff on the Facebook. That's a lot of things. All right, okay, let's go, let's go. Okay, right. Starting it off. What do you think about HP and mana scaling in Cataclysm? I'll tell you one thing. <laughs> Molten armor's useless at the minute. You can't use it for anything. I run out of mana with it under a minute. Under a minute if I don't have mana shield thing. Mage armor. Because I never used mage armor. Why would I need to? You never needed to use it in Wrath. I can't even remember what it's called. So, yeah. I think that needs to be sorted out because I have no idea why, why I'd use Molten Armor. I don't have enough mana regen to justify it. Maybe if it scales with gear somewhere. I don't know. Uh, I hope so. I certainly do hope so because if that's not the case, then... Yeah. So much for that, eh? So much for that. Okay. What else do we have? That's not a question at all. Ah, someone from Costa Rica is listening. Hello to Pablo, incidentally. Nice to have worldwide appeal. Hey, TB, I wonder if Northrend's changed at all. I said very slightly. I haven't really spent too much time in there, but from what I've been told in the guys in the beta, some of the references to Arthas are gone, and they might, they've just been replaced with, like, the Lich King. As to whether or not Arthas still pops up in places, I don't know. It may be that they're just going to replace him with whatever his face is, the new guy, and have him as the antagonist and just use his new model. But they don't think the new model's actually in yet. Because right now, we've just got the Lich King. He's in... What, where is he? The starting zone for the Death Knights. He's still there. So I don't know if they're just going to argue, oh, yeah, I have... Nah. It's not a clue. All right. What else? Are the Echo Isles a real city or just a training ground? Training ground. They're not a city. There are no city facilities. There's like a mailbox. And that's it. I don't even think, actually, that there's a flight point. I, I never saw one when I was there, anyway. What else do we have? How many new mini pets are there from crafting? No idea. There's a lot from archaeology. That's all I can say. Not all crafting stuff is fully implemented yet. Have you seen the new Alchemy Mount in the game yet? No, I have not. Nobody seems to have it. I have no idea what is required to actually work in that. Okay, what else do we have? Are there any kinds of changes to the Drain Eye or Blood Elf starting zones? No. Will non-guild players stand any chance of raiding in Cataclysm? A reduced chance, because there is no reason not to be in a guild in Cataclysm. Yeah. Hell, if you... Well, here's what I will say about this. If you want a guild, then come join trollface.jpg because it's going to be huge. Let, let me tell you a little bit about how I'm going to run this. Because people are concerned, oh, well, isn't it going to just be a Zerg guild? Yeah, it's going to be the biggest freaking Zerg guild you've ever seen. But here's how I'm going to work it. Everyone is welcome as long as they're a troll, but it will be split down into divisions. So, like, my raiding division, I will probably be raiding 10 mans. I might raid 25, but I'll probably just raid 10. I haven't come to a decision on that yet. Because I kind of like 10 man. It was pretty neat. So I might just have a 10-man raid division with 12 people in it. And it's like, I raid with these guys. We have our own separate Suicide King system. We have our own channel, and that's it. I'm still part of the guild, but I'm a subdivision of the guild. So we might have other 10-man groups that are regulars, and they're also part of the guild. So it's like 10-man division 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. They have their regular things, and each one of them is going to have a leader. It's going to have a captain, an officer that's going to manage that particular little shard of the guild. And we'll also have the PvPers. We'll have the 25-man raiders. We'll have the casual guys. We'll have the leveling guys. You can all be in one big guild. There's no harm in it. Actually, Cataclysm's encouraging large guilds with the whole way that guild achievements work. So, yeah, it's going to be a huge guild. Come join it. There are no requirements other than you being a troll and not being a freaking retard. I probably won't raid with you, ever. Because I'll raid with my guys. The guys that I want to raid with. And other you can raid with other guys. There'll be plenty of stuff available. So... Join a guild, really. The concept of guilds being elitist and really hard to join is a lie. It's a bit of garbage revisionism. There's lots of revisionism going on at the moment. We've got a couple of, well, I say a couple, there's more than that. A lot of idiot revisionists that are trying to pretend that Wrath heroics were just as hard at the launch of Wrath as, say, the first boss in Heroic BRC. 
And they were wrong. Totally, completely, utterly wrong. That's revisionist history, ladies and gentlemen. They're trying to rewrite it to push their entitled casual agenda. And I'm not having it. I'm not standing up for that. I remember that. I did them in the beta. And then I did them on live. Within a week of it launching. They were face rollable in greens. Get over it. They were. We didn't even bother with normals because we didn't need to. Hey, greens, heroic gear. Suddenly epics. Out of nowhere. That's how it worked. There were a couple of exceptions like Loken. And that was about it. Oculus was kind of tricky. Loken, Oculus... It's about it. I don't remember anything else being remotely challenging in Heroics in Wrath. And I played at the start of Wrath. I remember very keenly the launch day of Wrath. I was on air, for God's sake. I remember all of that stuff. And no. So the revisionists can go to hell. That is not the case. Anyway. Onward for great justice. Come join trollface.jpg. It's going to be on Anchorage EU. You must be a troll. Have you looked at Arcane in the beta? What are your thoughts DPS-wise? DPS on Arcane's fine, really. It's... It's just the same. There's nothing really different. It's the same kind of rotation. It's They haven't really spiced it up with anything. Okay, what else do we have? Q&A question. What do you think will be the most fun, challenging, heroic in Cataclysm? Probably Dead Minds, by the sounds of it. For what I've heard, but I haven't done all of them yet. What did Blizzard learn from Wrath? Oh, God. <laughs> That's a hard question. Well... For what they keep claiming, they've learned that the Wrath Heroics and stuff were garbage and that badges didn't work, but they, they said this and then they've implemented stuff that's just as bad, so I don't know how much they've learned. I can tell you for a fact they've learned how to do questing properly. That's one thing I will definitely say. And they've also learned that having large instances for like six to eight months is a terrible idea, which is why they're launching multiple instances per tier. Do you think that tier 11 will be easily obtainable just like tier 9, tier 10 was in Wrath? No, it'll be easily obtainable by people in the way that tier 7 was. Because tier 11 is the equivalent of tier 7. Tier 7 was easily acquirable by just doing Naxxramas. This will be the same thing. Just like any other tier gear. Tier gear was never really hard to get per se, with a couple of exceptions. Because like tier 2.5, the chess piece came from freaking Cathon. In TBC... A lot of tier gear just involved killing the bosses. I wouldn't call that hard to acquire. Hell, it was some of the easiest to acquire gear in the game, which is why tier gear, when taken out of the context of set bonuses, was actually inferior to non-tier set stuff, which was actually much harder to get, because it had lower drop rates. It wasn't guaranteed like, say, tier gear was, especially not when they put in the emblem system for it. Right. Is the improved fishing in yet? Not that I've seen, no. What do you think about the difficulty of Cataclysm? It's in a state of flux right now, and it needs to be sorted out, quite frankly. I, the heroic modes seem to vary. The normal modes, some of them are challenging, some of them aren't. It needs to be fixed. Out of curiosity, do you know, now, there are no major changes to the Outlands at all. Uh, what else do we have? Do you th- uh, have I seen the new Tree of Life in action? Yes, it's a 45-second buff. It's really good, but it doesn't actually last beyond that. It actually goes on a cooldown after that, so you do not stay in it. It is part of the new healing system. It is not what you do all the time. You cannot be a tree druid anymore. You just can't. You can have the tree ability, and you can use it on a cooldown, but you cannot stay in tree form 100% of the time. Right. What else do we have? No, that's not a question. Can you describe how awesome the WoW cinematic is? No, because it isn't in the game yet. Do you really think that no one would have released the cinematic for Cataclysm? Really? Really? As soon as that goes up, it's going on there. They're going to show it at... They'll show it at BlizzCon, I can guarantee it. That's where it's going to be shown. Right, has the login screen changed at all? Not yet, no. It will, but it hasn't yet. Okay, what else? I'll do a couple more, and then I'll do shoutouts, and then we can end the show. I was... Wondering what your opinion would be on an extremely hard mode for five mans. Right, okay, we're not going in any further than that. More difficulty levels are always a good thing. End of discussion. There is no valid argument against more difficulty levels and more choice for players. Hell, if there were an easy mode, a normal mode, a hard mode, and a brutal mode, I think I'd probably stop complaining as much. Right, you want you want easy, breezy content that doesn't require you to think? Okay, do the easy mode and stop trying to get into my groups. Shout out time, folks. Send them in. The Murloc at gmail.com. That is the Murloc at gmail.com. You can send them in via IRC chat if you so desire. And you can also send them in 
via the Twitter, if you wish, yes. Someone saying, my live show is an agony for re for listening. Perhaps you need a server upgrade. No. No one else is having that problem. Sorry, must be on your end. <laughs> you say you've got mega fast internet. That doesn't mean anything. There is a problem on your end that's causing it to buffer. No one else is complaining. Right, what else do we have? Shout out wise. There's one that's kind of important here that I probably should read. What else? Here it is, here it is, yes. This is a shout out to Fargrom from Amsterdam. He'd like a shout out to myself because he was brave enough to ask someone to marry me, and she said yes. I assume that must be his girlfriend. So, congratulations to Fargrom, you ballsy man. Now you are trapped, forever doomed, the undead. All right. What else do we have in terms of shout-outs? Many. Shout-out to Taraj for being the top Fury DPS warrior and the top arms PvP warrior on US Feather Moon. PS Shadow F- Morn for the win. Can I get a shout-out to my lovely wife, Silvana, for having a dream last night where you were working in a joke shop and to Inafei the Irishman who has appeared in your house since January. May I just point out the disturbing nature of your wife dreaming about me? Sulak the Torin Bear on Shadow Song EU. I think it probably caused a marital crisis there. Oh, God. A shout-out to Embergail on Nether, US, the Twisting Nether. The World of Warcraft greatest smelling guild since 1925. I see. More accurately, I really do not see at all. A shout-out to this banded guild, Frenzy Tusk, for all its old Nostanger it gives. Uh, Nostanger? What the hell's that? Yeah, it's from, it's from Grimald. What else do we have? Many shout-outs coming in by the chat room. Can I get a shout-out to After Dark on US Sengen and all the expats who are living and working in the US? Hell, I'll probably end up joining you at some point, Evan Shadow. Shout-out to the Gold Knights of the Round on Older Man US. That's from Sean Caster. Shout-out to Darkonian, who has mastered the PTR lag. That's, well, from Darkonian. And a shout-out to Hardcore, the level 60 rating guild on the same server inside as Arcanist Belt. Ah, yes. I didn't find that all that enjoyable. It was all right for a while. Have they fixed the Wargan Mount bug? No. <laughs> Are there any daily profession quest givers? That, that's not a shout-out, that's a quest. I'd like a shout-out to Tempest Legends and to all the other great folks, especially Iridan raiding on Blackmoor EU since Classic. That's from Amandria. And a shout-out to all Warlocks for being the original hero class and for always being greater than Major. That's from Toggy, who appears to be on drugs, since he is clearly delusional. A shout-out to the awesome guy who invo- invented Soul Swap for Affliction Locks in Cataclysm. That's from Nightmare060. And a shout-out to Dan Crax, or Dan Drax. On Cargath US, long-time podcast listener, first-time live listener. God, it has been a while. A shout-out to Mae Mutalis of Doomhammer EU for slaughtering people in PvP. And yes, there, are, there is absolutely a spot in the guild for tanks. There's a spot for everybody. A shout-out to the gnomes ruining, ruining Tiny Chat, perhaps, and the people who are still there. It's from Thomas Early. A shout-out to Darkmoon Fair Alliance. Get your brains back. Bring back good RP and smart PvE there. Horde Rock still. And a shout-out to the Dirty Horde Guild on Spinebreaker Horde side. Hopefully, it'll come back from the dead in Cataclysm. What else do we have? Tons and tons coming in right here. I'm sure we can find some more. Da, 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 da. Some people send in shout-outs early. That's actually not all that helpful. I can't really send them out. Here's one. To the raid group on Lightbringer US for finally downing Heroic Putricide 25. Good luck on Heroic Syndragoza and Heroic Lich King. It's from Rowan Lightbringer US. There you go. Can we get a shout-out to the crazy Australians and the dedicated cam whores who push with the trolls to be part of your amazing show? A shout-out to Arany for looking super awesome in a suit. King, because he can't be here tonight, and Finn, because of Finn. Yes, indeed. That is from the Dark Lady. Who else do we have? A shout-out to the Guild Sanctuary, Eridar US. That's from Bifram Man. A shout-out to the Syndicate on the best PvP guild, apparently, on Eridar. So says Shriggs. And the only PvP guild on Alliance side, Eridar. Well, Alliance don't like to fight. They're a bunch of wusses. And a shout-out to Kudex from Sourfang for being awesome. Getting up at 5am to listen to Blue Please and Total Biscuit ramble on. And last but by no means least, to the Duality Guild on Skullcrusher EU, who let me raid in their Swedish guild. That's from Christopher Summer. Okay. We're done, folks. I believe we are very much done. You have been listening to Blue Please here on CynicalBrit.com. Feel free to check out my YouTube channel. There are always new videos going up every single day. And, of course, feel free to take part in the contest to win yourself some delicious time cards. Hmm. What could I play? Some cheese sounds good. So I know my wife loves cheese. She actually 
really hates me when I cheese out on power metal, but hey, I'll play this for you. This is called Aventasia. It is by Aventasia. Good night.